Welcome back to AppTerabytes. I wanted to make this video about a pretty cool concept that I saw an article about a few days ago. Basically, there are some scientists in Switzerland and they've been working on a special type of solar panel actually for a while now. And more recently, they were able to find a little bit of a breakthrough, which they believe will allow them to maximize efficiency. And so the solar panels ultimately can be transparent, so they can be on windows, they can be multicolored, so they can be sort of glass facades, they can be on greenhouses, and so I thought this was a pretty cool concept and something that Aptera could probably consider adding to the vehicle in the future. So on the article, it looks like this. So basically, you can see right through it. You can see that there's just a little bit of light refraction. Otherwise, it is mostly transparent. This is the article here. And it just came out a few days ago. And it's called Hydroxamic Acid Preadsorption Raises Efficiency of Co-Sensitized Solar Cells. And these are some of the main authors here. Gratzel. And some of these cells have been called Gratzel cells in the past, and the other one is Hagfelt. So Science Daily sort of summarized it. They said that they have been able to develop a way of improving the packing of the newly designed photosensitizer dye molecules. And basically they took a surface of hydroxamic acid and bonded this together to the titanium dioxide that they had already been using and that increased the efficiency or what they call the power conversion efficiency. This is an example of these cells. This is actually not from the most recent article but some of the work that they have done in the past. This is a building that was opened in 2014 called the Swiss Tech Convention Center and so you can see that these are all multicolored solar panels. You can see some of the connections here coming out of the solar panels. So the abstract for the article says that the best performing co-sensitized solar cells exhibited a PCE or power conversion efficiency of 15.2%. And that was under standard sort of testing environments. These are the cells that Aptera will be using, the Maxion Gen 3 cells. And you can see that both tested under this 1.5 global standard air mass. And you can see that the efficiency of the Maxion Gen 3 cells are about 23 to 24%, whereas the efficiency of the cells that can be transparent and placed on windows is about 15.2%. So you look at the Aptera and you sort of think about how this could possibly be used to improve the Aptera's range. So the hood adds about six miles of solar range. And so you're considering that those are about 24% efficient. So if you think about it, if you add this new solar system to both window components on both sides, I would estimate that you can probably add about one to three miles of range just by doing that. So then the question becomes, how affordable would that be? Would there be value in doing that? The article does state that under certain conditions with ambient light, they were able to get an efficiency of about 28.4 to 30.2 percent, but that's not very realistic. I wanted to go into sort of how this could possibly have any application to the Aptera. So there are certain features of the Aptera that could certainly be powered just from these window cells alone. So this is a set of data from Tesla Roddy where they tried to estimate the wattage of different features in a 
Tesla Model S, I believe, over the course of an hour. So I just wanted to highlight that two seat heaters in a Tesla would be about 133 watt hours, which would decrease your range by about 0.4 miles every hour. I did want to update everyone that although the frequently asked questions section of the Aptera website suggests that there will be a plan for heated seats, this is not something that they will be doing in the models that will be released next year, at least according to a question and answer session during the Gamma reveal. So based on the Tesla Rati article, I think Aptera seats would probably require a little bit less energy, so you would estimate about 50 watt hours or 50 watts every hour per seat. So if one person is driving, that's about 50 watts. If two people are driving for an hour, that's about 100 watts. On the other hand, they did state in the same question and answer session that they are hoping to get a wireless charging pad. Sort of in this area, you just tuck your phone in and it charges. Most wireless charging pads go up to about 15 watt hours. And to charge from 0 to 100%, you're talking about 25 watt hours. So taking the daily average commute into consideration for the Aptera, which is about 100 watt hours per mile, you're talking about 4,100 watt hours per day being used. So some of those numbers like the 15 watts used in an hour to wirelessly charge or the 50 watts used per hour to heat a seat for an hour seem like very minuscule amounts. And I do believe that just adding transparent window solar as well as possibly a composite windshield where the top four inches or so also take in solar since most of those rays will not be hitting the dashboard could help you power some of your small features in the vehicle such as wireless charging if you look closely at this picture it almost looks like there's a phone tucked into the console there so then the question becomes would it be valuable or financially responsible and reasonable to try something like this on the side windows and even possibly the top trim of the windshield of an Aptera. So the article also states that they do believe this is a pretty cost-effective option because you can actually print these solar films on a roll printer. You can't make the glass or the composite window structure on a printer, but you can at least make the solar cells on a roll printer. So I just wanted to show you a little bit of a video showing how that works. These ultra-thin solar panels can be printed like newspapers. So there you have it. Let me know what you think of this concept. Could it possibly be something that would add one to three miles to an Aptera daily range? You know, you think about the surface area of the top window and then the bottom window on both sides. Probably adds up to about the entire surface area of the hood. Then you consider that each side is only getting solar rays one side at a time. So usually when this side is getting solar rays, the other side will not be getting solar rays. And there will also be times of the day where neither side is really getting much solar exposure. So based on the cost-effective printing model. Let me know what you think. Do you think this would be something useful for Aptera to consider? You know, some, certain states do allow for tinting down to about six inches here. Would it be reasonable for them to consider adding that transparent solar cell technology to the top of the windshield? Or maybe make that a upgrade that you can pay for just to get an extra probably about two miles of solar charging per day.
As always, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate everyone that has subscribed to the channel and hope to continue to grow this channel. 